making sure that those who need help get it. That's the goal of a group of bills seeking to make Pennsylvania's welfare system more fair. Let's spend five minutes on the subject with State Representative Carrie Benninghoff. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Sure. Uh, public welfare spending right now accounts for roughly 40 percent of the general fund budget, and it's grown about 70 percent in the last decade. Uh, while there are some legitimate reasons uh, for this growth, many people believe that savings can be found if we root out some fraud and, and some mismanagement. Can you discuss that? Well, I think this is an issue that we hear in a bipartisan manner. Uh, former uh, governor candidate, Auditor Jack Wagner, brought this up several times as the Auditor General and as a candidate, uh, that he believed there was a savings of almost $2 billion. Uh, the welfare department was designed to help those individuals who, for whatever reason, may need some assistance, whether loss of jobs or loss of a spouse, and I think the Commonwealth wants to provide those benefits. What we don't want to be doing is providing benefits to somebody who doesn't need it, who are deliberately, fraudulently uh, spending money that should not be spent. Uh, you mentioned the Auditor General, Jack Wagner. He did do, a, do an audit. Yes. Uh, in addition, our House Republican Policy Committee has looked at these issues as well. Can you talk about some of the examples of, of fraud and abuse that they found when they looked well, into this? Well, sadly, system? there's some bl pretty blatant examples. One individual actually had 99 electronic debit cards or access cards. Uh, these have no visual identification on just somebody's name. And a gentleman was using them as commerce. He would sell them to someone else or he would sell the use of them and then they would bring the card back and he would get a payment for those things. Again, one individual being able to apply and receive 99 debit cards to me is outrageous. Another examples are that we actually find people who shop around and they go state to state and they may hold cards getting access benefits from multiple states. Uh, some people believe because a lot of this money is funded through the federal government that it doesn't matter where your residency and in Pennsylvania we've had a problem that the re residency requirement really has not been enforced well. Mm -hmm. uh, House Republicans have introduced a package of bills mm -hmm. called Welfare, F-A-I-R, yes. yes. uh, to address some of these problems. Can you highlight some of the few keys to this? Well, I think the key is that we're trying to be fair about this. Mm -hmm. uh, taxpayers don't mind spending money if they think it's a good program or if they're truly helping somebody. But the fairness is very simple. Uh, if an individual has had a history of drug abuse, uh, they would be eligible to be randomly tested for current drug abuse. Uh, most people believe that if you're receiving state taxpayer-funded benefits, you should not be utilizing illicit drugs. Uh, this would not be a test on all recipients, only those who've had a prior history of drug abuse. Additionally, a photo ID on the access cards. I have a name that has absolutely could be used for a woman or a man, and so only having a name uh, does not necessarily verify my identification, and therefore these people sometimes will use the cards, trading them or selling them to each other to go out and get services, whether it's for dental services or purchases, for recipients who are not qualified or even registered on the welfare system. I think that's wrong. That's fraud. Uh, that's an abuse of the system, an abuse of the taxpayer dollars, and we're trying to streamline that. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to enforce uh, some of the requirements that you have to be a resident, show an income. There are eligibility requirements to participate in this program and we believe under welfare, F-A-I-R, it's only fair to require uh, that you meet those standards to get taxpayer subsidies. And I guess there's also a special allowance program that had a number of inconsistencies in it, a, a program where maybe people can uh, purchase things like tools that they would need if they have a construction job. Yes, and oftentimes those things were abused, whether it was for a, a cosmetic business or an, a, what they would do is they would file for these services and never have participated, whether they're in a construction or a beauty shop. Uh, vehicles, you know, the Commonwealth has provided money for these vehicles. Sometimes they'd purchase a vehicle and then they'd resell the vehicle and take the cash from it. Uh, we're trying to prevent those types of things. The goal is to assist someone to get back to work, assist somebody if they want to get new schooling, additional schooling to get a better career or a new career because of a job loss. That's the whole concept behind welfare, uh, to help you up, give you a boost, and get you on your way that you can become a taxpaying citizen yourself. And, and finally, too, as you mentioned, there's people that do need the assistance, and this, these changes would not affect those people. Absolutely. Uh, welfare is a multi-generational benefit. We have people of all ages on this, and those who truly qualify, whether by age, need, disability, and or income levels, 
are not going to be affected by some of the changes. This is about people who just don't want to go to work and have found very clever ways to uh, manipulate the system, get benefits, get cash, um, improperly use these debit cards or multiple cards for cash benefits for themselves. That is not fair to the taxpayers who are paying for that. And also, it takes money and benefits away from those individuals who really need it. Exactly. We are here to take care of our commonwealth and take care of our people and those who, from what, you know, issues that are necessarily out of their control, need some assistance, not those who just choose not to work. Thank you so much for talking about this issue today. Thank you for having us. It's mm -hmm. a good way to get the commonwealth back on track. If you have comments or questions about this or any other legislative topic, Representative Benninghoff's contact information will be on the screen in just a few moments. I'm Laurie Bull. Thanks for spending five minutes with State Representative Carrie Benninghoff.